Bro, but we never heard about this in the media, the abuse. We never, who knew? I never knew this. This is the first time I'm hearing this. It was awful. I didn't want to overstep my boundary. Will you come on the road and do back and singing with Amy? I said, nah, bro, I'm sorry, man. It's a great question. I actually don't think anyone has ever asked me that question. Calls you. Amy Winehouse calls you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good to see you people on the Thursday, first of many midweek broadcasts. Tonight we're doing a very special livication, and I say livication, of the great one and only Miss Amy Winehouse. But we also have to give a livication, we're giving flowers now, today in 2021, to a very good friend of mine, very good friend of mine who is the guest for tonight's show. Guest for tonight's show, who needs no introduction. Tom, sir, who we're bringing in the building right now. Good friend from long time, Zalem. Hey, Bring brother. Oh! Hey. Hey. Boom. Hey. Hey. How are you, man? Bro, I'm so good, man. I'm so uh, good. I feel good, brother. And I'm even uh, better now. Good brother, good to see you, man. You're looking man, strong. It's been a, while. It's been a <laughs> long time, brother. Oh my God! I, I I don't want to say I don't want to say how many years I've known you for, bro, because people think I'm like I don't know, like 21 or something. <laughs> <laughs> Is that good share butter, bro? Is that good cold butter, <laughs> you know what I mean? We can't expose it. For, for, as far you as they're concerned, we're bro. still we teenagers. Can't expose it, man. They can't expose it. Hey guys, how you doing? I hope you're well. I'm just checking the comments down there. Of course, there. my brother. Of course, yeah. that. Yes, Courtney, good to see your face, man. Good to see you as well, my king, brother. Always has been too long, brother. You know, Troy Bar days, back in the day, Troy oh, Bar. Wow, yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. Man. Man, that's like the start of the journey, bro. That is the start of the journey. Absolutely, lutely, bro. Absolutely. Black Pepper days with Flowetry, Natalie, Marsha, you know, Johnny D, MC Tyrus in peace. Bro, foundational crew from way back when. Wow, you're taking it back, bro. You're taking it back. <laughs> <laughs> so my king, my king, my king, my brother. Yes, I want to start off by letting people know what your resume is, bro. I'm going to read right now. And you can correct mm -hmm. Wikipedia, bro, because I'm re reading from it. I know you personally, but let's read for the audience. Zalon. Oh, it says your birthday. I won't let people know. Brilliant. No, no, don't worry with that. I think <laughs> actually, I actually think um, uh, for a while uh, with my birthday, it was wrong. Um, I, I don't know how they got it. I don't know if it's my brother's birthday, but I kept on getting ber um, happy birthday messages twice a year. I didn't right. mind, but <laughs> like, it was wrong on Wikipedia. But yeah, continue, continue. Yeah, man. Zella, a British pop songwriter, record producer. I know him. He is widely known for his backing vocals with Amy, and I'm gonna add Amy, the great Amy Winehouse for her Grammy award winning Back to Black. Yeah, beautiful yeah. picture there. Beautiful, uh, beautiful yeah, picture. I remember that picture we was on tour. Yeah, yeah. remember that? Yeah. Jeez, 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 wait, wait, whereabouts? Where on tour was he? Was it in this country? Was it in the UK or somewhere in Europe? You know, to be honest, right? Um, I remember moments. I don't remember every single location because we literally traveled the world. Mm. So uh, I just remember moments. And um, sometimes we had different band members who performed with us. So in that, can I can I see it again? Can I see it again? Of course you can, brother. This is your show. It's your time. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Yeah, so some of the band members, we've got Troy there, who's next to Amy, top right, uh, Troy Miller and Zantane Black. They wasn't always on every single show. So right. Amy had, I think, maybe uh, four drummers. She had Nathan, uh, Pete Biggins, Troy and Frank Tonto. So as you can see, wow. there's four different drummers that played across maybe a six year period. So that reminds me of a time when I see Troy, I realize, ah, this was the fun that we had when Troy was around. You know, Zantane Black, there was two uh, he, there was two keyboard players. Right. So when I see him, I also think about the times when he was around. So that's more how I do it 
as opposed to just like because of the picture i know the location you know nice brother memories man memories and emotions and brother speaking of pictures i'm looking in your background and i can see the indigo purple light around that beautiful picture brother yeah. and that, that looks like well that's definitely amy winehouse but the brother looks like you that's, yeah that's, that's right that's right so um i'm very blessed because um i love art and some of my fans or followers around the world are artists. Come on. So um, they often create artwork and then send to me. I've got so many, um, so many pieces of art. And this is just one that I love. This is uh, from a uh, gentleman in Italy, Petito. Um, oh. He's made a few different versions for me. Um, and um, it's just amazing. It really just blows me away. It really, really, really does. I get sent a lot. Um, and it's just amazing that people spend their time, yes. you know, to 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 create art. And um, yeah, this was a very special piece uh, of mine because of uh, the connection that I had with Amy. So that I, I put it up in my house. Yeah, I'm not even gonna lie to you, no cap, brother. I can feel the energy and the connection. Oh, it's that for real? And, yeah. and I watched the video of you and Amy of the sister, and you can see that love connection there, brother. You can see that brotherly sisterly connection right there, brother. Sure. And you know, you know what it is, Courtney. She, you, you know, when we was coming up in the business, right? Mm. This is the time when the record companies were around, and um, you know that you needed a record company um, investment in order to have a career. You, you would not have, you couldn't, you couldn't break through. This was prior to the internet. Come on. So along comes someone like Amy, who's had a, she was in. The, the record company infrastructure. Yes. And she consistently gave me love and opportunities when, you know, where I come from, the area that I came from, you know, the people that I was around who always wanted an opportunity. Mm. We never always had opportunities. And she was just consistent in her love. So that's why I'm eternally grateful because, you know, mm. uh, she gave a young, you know, a boy with a young dream once had this one young dream in my heart. Come she on. gave me a chance to share my talent, you know, so I'll forever sing her praises. Come on, brother. Tell us about that. How did you meet Amy Winehouse? How did it all happen? I mean... Um, I want I want to say, sorry, just this big Zeke's has just joined. Of he's course. A, he's a, a, an artist Zeke. who lives around the area. Yeah, I just want to big him up. Big um, up. So how did I meet Amy? Um, uh, I, I, I met Amy because I was performing at a celebrity... Uh, there was a celebrity... A night spot in London called Ten Rooms. Do you remember Ten Rooms? Yeah, why you? Oh man, why you invite me, bro? You should. Have, no, 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 no. I was busy. I was well, busy. listen, it's a funny thing because when Ten Rooms was at its peak, I couldn't get in. Like you could not get into Ten Rooms because it was like the place to be. There was Come probably on. only uh, uh, there was probably only a capacity of maybe three, four hundred people, right? Right. But it had literally. Like every week, there was a different celebrity. Right. Whether it was Black Eyed Peas, Will Smith, uh, Amy Winehouse, Joss Stone. Uh, you just never knew uh, Pharrell Williams. Beyond you knew all of them, not best in the world. You knew you were going to be someone, but you didn't know who. You yeah. just had to go, roll the dice. And, and what the, the host would do is he would invite the artist to come and perform with the band. Come on. I would, I was in the band, uh, but before that, I couldn't even get in. It was that exclusive. Jeez. It was that exclusive where, you know, people, if you wasn't on the guest list, you had to really sneak the bouncers, you know, some money to say, please, no, like, no, no. you know, let me in. in. You know, everybody wanted to get in. Mm. And so eventually um, I was asked to sing there. And um, uh, in initially when he asked me to sing, uh, Patrick Allen, uh, I said, no, I'm not going to do it because I'm not a backing singer. Right? Listen, pause right there. And then pause, pause. Listen, let me tell you about something. You see, Zellum, no cap, no BS. The brother can sign. If you think <laughs> the song that we just played is your hair in Zellum's vocals, and you are, brother can sing live. It's no coincidence that Zellum was a vocalist for Amy Whitehouse, people need to peep game. Sorry, to, and I'm, people get your friends to come up on this live right now. We're in the house. Yeah, guys, share, house. Listen, man, we're gonna be if you go and share this with your friends, share this out now. Share uh, it. You guys can, we're gonna give you a chance to ask questions as well. Yes, and with Courtney, 
And uh, we, we're going at it, yeah? So share this to all your friends. Tell them to get the hell on this live get right now. Get the so, hell on this line right now with Zella. Yeah. So, so, so Patrick asked me to be a part of it, and I said, no, I'm not a backing singer. Right. right? Um, and then uh, uh, I was with uh, my ex-girlfriend at the time. I went to her and said, hey, uh, I was asked to sing at this celebrity spot. Come on. He wants me to sing backing vocals. And I'm not a backing vocalist. And she and he, and she said uh, she said at the time, I think you should do it. Right? And I said, Do you think destiny? Because the reason the reason why I said no wasn't because of arrogance. It's just because at that time, if the industry typecast you as a certain way, like you're a backing singer, they would never give you a chance as a lead artist. I hear. So, so I I, I knew that. If I, if I went down the path of being typecasted a certain way, I knew that it potentially could ruin my chance of performing and being live and having my own audience and touring, etc. So I was kind of open to that possibility. So I was surprised she was going to agree with me. Can you hear me? Right, so she encouraged you. We kind of lost you there for a few moments because the Instagram satellite is just playing up a little piece. No, that's fine. I got a phone call from my mum. Right? Oh, mummy! Mummy! No, mummy. I just had to cut mummy off. I just had to cut mummy off. <laughs> Sorry, mum. Sorry, Sorry mum. Anybody, if anybody knows my mum, just text her and say I'll, I'll message her back soon. Is mum Jamaican, by the way? <laughs> All right, so um, can you hear me? Yeah, mum's Jamaican, right? Yeah, 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 uh -oh, yeah. Don't worry. Uh -oh. I understand, yeah. bro. I get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She's cool. She's cool. So, um, yeah, as I said, I I was surprised that my my ex girlfriend at the time mm. said to me that I should do it. Mm. So I called my brother Ishmael. Yes. And I said, Patrick asked me to sing backing vocals, right? And I said no, but Chanel said yes. And then my brother said, I think you should do it. I said, What? What's wrong with you two? So I decided to do it. Come now, on. to tell you this story, now to tell you this story, we have to go back a little bit. So tell my us, dad, brother. my dad is a reggae singer. So yes. he was he was big in the 70s, right? Dr. Mm. Alimentado. And he was uh, among yeah. he was amongst the 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 artists that helped to bring reggae to the world, right? Meaning from Jamaica there was a sound and a style, just like how we have grime. He was amongst oh. that scene, you know? Yes. And, um, uh, you know, he knew all the, the, the greats, all the Bob Marleys. He knew all of them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. So uh, my dad, as a kid, always used to say to me about his journey touring. But he's doing yeah. reggae music. So I never mm -hmm. really, I was like, nah, that's old people. That's rubbish. That's, like, you know, reggae music. So when I got older... He asked me, this is before Amy, he asked me to come on the road with him and sing back in vocal. And I'd done it. I'd done a show. He sold out at like uh, Kentish Town Forum uh, yes. in London. Um, and I was like, wow, this is the first, because he stopped performing for many years. And I saw him perform and I was like, wow, not only do you really have fans and followers, um, but you really like, um, you know, but you, you like, you're a great performer. Come on, and, boss. Um, uh, he asked me to go on the road with him and to, to do backing singing. And I said, right. no, Dad, I'm not a backing singer. That was previously, right? So mm -hmm. fast forward a couple of years working with Amy, my dad calls me up and says, Zalon, you told me you're not a backing singer. Now you're the most famous <laughs> backing singer in the world. <laughs> Whoa, well, pups. Come on. Come on. So back in 10 rooms, you're in 10 rooms now. Your girlfriend at that time says, yeah, go ahead. You can, you should sing. Your brother encourages you to sing. And I understand what you mean in terms of the backing vocalists, in terms of branding cast type, because if you do extras work, for example, in acting, if you're seen as a background artist, then you're never really going to make it in England as a main principal cast actor. So I totally understand it's, this, it's very similar in terms of the industry of acting and music. So, brother, tell us more. You sang at 10 Rooms. Amy was there? Yeah. So um, I, I, I would be I would be on that. So I would sing back in vocals. And, you know, um, sometimes I would get up and I would sing with the famous person. But I also would sing by myself. And I was singing at the time um, 
R. Kelly, um, um, uh, Duncan Brian. My mind's yeah. telling me no. Straight. But my body, Lady. my body is telling me yes, baby. And I don't want to hurt nobody. But there's something that I must confess. I don't see nothing wrong. Oh. With a little bit of So. That was and by that the way, thing. people, that Zalem wasn't singing, that was me singing, he was miming me. That was me singing there. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> that, 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 that. Flames for Zalem. I see all the ladies, them are just like, oh my god, Zalem. Listen, uh, uh, listen, I do. Uh, uh, yeah, I feel like I haven't sang in over a year and a half, so so oh, so bear with me. Powerful. But but so so that used to be like the song, and I used to sing to the ladies, you know, I'd get down on my knees and just crooning soulful crooning old school crooning you know and um so i used to perform and then amy came up on stage and was like oh my god you're amazing <clears throat> like these times i didn't know who she was right because it's just like for me it was just there was like a small girl that just came on stage and she's like oh my god you're amazing i'm like thanks but like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like I'm singing, you know, yeah. like, you know, when somebody just comes in the middle of your performance and they're standing right there. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. See, that's how like, you're, you're amazing. Like, you know, she does this head like, no, you're amazing, right? And I'm like, thanks. And I'm looking at the audience. Everyone's like looking at each other, like, like, what's going to happen? You know, I'm Woo. looking at the band, I'm looking at the audience, like, what's going to happen? And the host, Patrick Allen, said, ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Amy, what? no, Miss Amy, why now? And then she sang. And I was like, Oh my God, you're amazing. Like, you are amazing. Like, and her talent was so sublime because whenever we used to jam or freestyle, it used to, like, I've heard many singers sing, but when she sang, the note selection, the feeling, the raw, mm. raw emotion, it felt as if someone had taken a knife, mm. stabbed it in the heart, and then pulled it down. Woo! That's how much pain it was. And I was just like, nah, Alice. this girl is really special. Really, really special. Ain't me. Yeah, man, that's and, a and you know what? You know what, Courtney, right? Mm. People think Amy was a great artist, right? Uh -huh. Like she was a great singer, right? But I feel like the world didn't even hear how good she was. Oh, man. I feel like, because I heard what they heard, right? But she was better than that. Yes. Do you know what I mean? She was better than that. But when they say that she was, when they were like, oh, she's an amazing singer, I'm like, yeah, but you guys just don't know. Like, she really was. It's yeah. just, she never, when she sang, she never sang to show off. She sang because that was the emotion in that moment. Come on, brother. Do you understand? Uh, yeah, and her influence is like, what? The, obviously, Billie Holiday, Erica Badu, correct me if I'm wrong. If Wikipedia's wrong, correct them, brother. Mary J. Blige and the great Sam Cooke, you know? And for me, Amy Winehouse, listening to her, she sung from a place of truth and authenticity. You know, you yeah. want to, no disrespect to the artists today, the young artists today. They are beautiful. We love them. We rate them. But Amy Winehouse, in my opinion, brother, and I'm no cap, she was like a reincarnation. It's like that energy, that spirit, because I was watching a documentary and she, her influences were gospel, jazz, blues. And she, she was like someone who time traveled into this modern era and was singing through the vessel of Amy Winehouse. You, it's just, and, 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 and you know, they were, you're absolutely right, bro. You're absolutely right. And you know, even me now, um, like obviously there's amazing talent out there, but I, I mainly stick to the old school because I just feel that it was when it, in its creation, it was so authentic and real. And and um, it wasn't just about just having streams or likes or hits or the money or it wasn't being it, like they were influencing a, a, a culture uh, from, you know, it was, do you understand what I mean? Yes, it wasn't sir. just, so yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Like, uh, she, it's like she time traveled for real. And yes, she bro. gave me, she gave me confidence to be myself. I don't know if there's ever been 
someone in your life that mm. you could have been a coach when you were playing football or or anything mm. where somebody said who you are or what you do is good enough. Come on. Do you know how powerful it is? Come on, brother. Do you know how powerful that is? Brother, I feel you. I feel it, brother. I feel it. <laughs> Brother, I, I feel it. I feel what you're saying, brother. I feel what you're saying about Amy. You know, as that picture illustrates perfectly, you used to were destined to meet. You were destined to meet. She saw a soul, a kindred spirit with you, and that's why she felt comfortable walking on the stage in 10 rooms to meet and greet her soul, brother. And you yeah. were like, mm, okay. And you're like, you didn't yeah. know who she was, but you were destined to meet and yeah, so, brother, sure. what was the journey from there briefly? You met. It was, was was it a phone call after that? Uh, was it like auditions? How did it go, brother? So yeah, okay. So um, after, so basically, she was a fan of mine, right? Come on. And she used. To, I didn't know this at the time, but she used to come down to ten rooms specifically to see me. Oh. And um, she'd come on stage and flat with me on stage in front of everyone and all that kind of stuff, and she'd make like this whole show, but no one knew who she was. Well, sorry, she had released Frank, but she wasn't as big. Her album probably went gold, right, at the time. So uh, it wasn't as popular at that time. Um, and um, so she would come down and, you know, she would flirt with me on the stage and everyone and blah, people like, ooh, look at those two, you know? And um, uh, so every time that she would come, we'd just go to the corner and then we would just like sing to each other. So the band would be in the main room uh -huh. and we would just be like chopping it up, just singing in the corner. And then people would now kind of crowd around us separately because it's like, hey, what's going on over here? Mm. And you know, after the night's finished, we're still singing and you know, over the music and it was just a great vibe, right? Mm. So um, uh, a few, I didn't see her after a while, you know, because she used to just pop up. I didn't see her after a while. Mm. And then um, the one of the band members turned around and he was like, uh, hey, will you come on the road and do back in singing with Amy? Jeez. And I said, I said, nah, bro, I'm sorry, man. I don't do back in singing, man. That's not, <laughs> that's not what I do. <laughs> and um, so she calls me up and she's like. She actually hey, calls you. Amy Winehouse calls you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeez. She was like, she was like. Baby, will you come on the road with me? How can and you? I was no! How, yeah, 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 yeah. How yeah. Go ahead. And, and, and remember, so so you have to remember, it's not the when In saying that now, it's like, oh, Amy Winehouse, like saying someone big, like Beyonce calls you up. It wasn't that. It was just the a musician. Mm. It was just a musician that you respect. But the relationship I had with her, I said, you know what? For you... Because I like you, mm. I'm going to do this. I wouldn't uh, do this for anyone else, bro. but I'm going to do this for you. You know, like, yeah, yeah let's do it. Come on. Bro. And um, she was like, um, yeah, baby, will you come on the road with me? I said, oh, go on then. <laughs> and then it was supposed to be for six months and then it was six years. Oh, and so beautiful. It was like, it was like a whole world of, when I, when I explained to you, it felt like I was living two lives mm. all the time, right? Because I was living day-to-day -day life, you know? And mm. at that time, you know, I'd be living at home, right? Even though I was touring with Amy, I was still living at home at the time, right? Mm. You know, so I'd have all these amazing experiences. And I'd come home to my Jamaican mother, and she'd be like, God, do the dishes! You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> you think this is a hotel? <laughs> well, I know, I'm a winner. I'm you in know, my 40s I, and my mum still talks like that to me. Yeah, go, listen, yeah, listen, right. Listen, <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, let me tell you, no matter how, no matter who I was on stage with, how many thousands of fans, go and do the dishes, you know, when you come in. This ain't no hotel. So it was great. It was a great experience. Um yeah. between between, you know, um like living a a, a normal life and then, you know, private yeah. jets and yeah. A-list treatments, VIP, private, you know, everything. It was Come just on. like really incredible. So I think, I think though what happened is um, I don't think people understand the level of experience I received mm. working with her and the amount that I learned and I saw. <laughs> you see, it's like, uh, I feel like I was an apprentice like 
going around, mm -hmm. uh, going through the job. So I know what it feels like to be a megastar. Like I know exactly what yes. it's like. You know when in X Factor they have these dreams and they're crying, oh my God, I want to be like, I know what it's like. Like we'd go to, we stay in the same hotel rooms. Come on. Like, you know, same hotels. We travel the same, sometimes, at the beginning especially, it's like private jets, we rub shoulders with the same celebrities, the same people. She's standing here, I'm standing there. Like it, we're going through the same experience. Come on, All it is, it's not by the camera, yeah. You understand? Mm. So it says of experience. I feel like I truly embodied and understood what it means to have that level of uh, of exposure because I saw it close, as close as you can yes. without it being you. Yes. But because maybe um, the camera, I, because you don't see me in every single, uh, that I wasn't singing all the songs, it, you kind of probably, people didn't maybe realize the level of, of ex the experience I was able to get. But mm -hmm. that came in so powerful mm. and um, so helpful later on uh, when it came to doing my own stuff, which I'm sure we'll get to. Brother, brother. You know, as you're talking, Zalan, I'm not just saying it because I know you and you're my good brother and friend. When you're speaking and I bear witness to what one uh, audience member just said, sounds like a great story. I can actually feel her spirit from and through you, brother. I can wow. feel her spirit through you, you know? Wow. And brother... You know, there's, you're saying that you were traveled with Amy Winehouse everywhere. You you know, you and her, you were in the same space. It was you, Jay-Z, Beyonce, Amy Winehouse. How was that experience for you, brother? I mean, oh, that particular there, moment. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a couple of stories. I mean, look, there's so many stories. Some I will share, some yes, I will never, course. some I will take, some I will take to my grave. Uh, yes. But there's a story where basically, um, I actually have the footage of this. There's so much, I have footage as well. So basically, uh, Amy, um, she uh, was a massive fan of, of Nas, Nasir Jones. Yes. Me and Mr. Jones, what kind of, yeah, you know? So yes. uh, she was a big fan of her, and I was a big fan of Beyonce. Um, not like, when I say a big fan, I mean like old school Beyonce, when she was like, Prior and to Jay Z, no, 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 no. Hey. Yeah, I, I just, I just, I just, I was just mesmerized by. Her. I just thought, mm -hmm. like, I, I, I liked her, like, uh, you know, um, she's obviously very beautiful now. But I'm saying, yeah. when I was like, oh, I love, like, I love this girl, right? Was was when she was like the girl next door, when she was like, so yes, Stilo's in the building. Stilo, yes, I like Big Stilo. Up. Yeah, when when she was natural girl next door. Um, and um, I would I would talk about her, and she would talk about Nas. And then one day, uh, Jay Z was performing at Glastonbury. Jay Z and um, Jay Z was performing at Glastonbury, and it was a big thing in the papers because I think one of the Oasis, Liam Gallagher, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Hip hop has no place at Glastonbury, right? Mm. Mm. So um, I was getting dressed. And it just came to my mind. I was like, oh my God. Like at this time, Beyonce, it wasn't, it wasn't like a uh, common knowledge that Beyonce and Jay-Z was together. Right. It was like, are they, aren't they? It was that kind of unsure. So at that time, I was like, oh, Beyonce's here. Amy heard and was like, right. But she knew I liked her. She <laughs> grabs me and then pulls me. And these times I have no trousers on. I said, I can't leave <laughs> Beyonce with my trousers on. I'm literally. As she's pulling me, I'm like trying to pull up my trousers, right? And I have to go back, and I, I have to get my, I have to get my, uh, my, uh, my, my, my trousers, right? And um, I, I said, I can't meet Beyonce with no trousers on. <laughs> and then she's like, so she pulls me to Beyonce, and I always, you know, when in your head you think about what you're gonna say when you meet someone. So I yeah. thought I was gonna be real smooth, right? And I was gonna uh -huh. be like, yo, she's be like, you know, uh -huh. what's up, bro? How you do? Like, what's up? What up? Yeah, what's up? You know, or I just do the the real like, hello there, how are you? You know, the real British. How are you? Know, you know, give me my little British swag. Yeah? Me, hello, darling, how are you? Yes, are you? nice to meet you. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> right. And um um, and then so eight before I could say anything, uh -huh. Amy goes, "This is Zalon, and he likes you." Jeez. And so, I was like. It's an honor to meet you. <laughs> I, just, 
I just, <laughs> wow. I just I, it threw me because it was like, yeah, this is how he likes you. It's like, it's an honor to be here. Yeah, and she was beautiful, man. She was beautiful, really, really. She's like, uh oh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. I didn't know what the um, woman was. Oh, brother. Yeah. Was. Hmm. She was, she was, she was. And mm -hmm. so that was the first time I had met uh, Beyonce and Jay Z. And then she went mm -hmm. to Jay Z. And then so she was like, um, uh, she was like, oh, uh, like this is my, this is Zalon. He's my artist and he's amazing. And she's like, oh, if you say he's amazing, he must be. Like, I can't do his accent, right? But he's like, <laughs> like, he's like, he's like he's amazing. Okay, he must be, right? I'm trying to do his accent. I can't. Right? Um, and so we kind of were just like, kind of chopping it up a little bit. Cool. Um, and I kind of, I kind of filmed some of that interaction, by the way. I have some of that, that footage and not all of it is out. Right. I haven't put it all out, right? Yes, sir. Because I have stuff of Amy that I've just not put out. Of course. Um, 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 so, um, so that happened. Mm. And then the next time when I met, um, the next time when I met Jay Z, I think I've ever publicly told he was story. performing in central London. I think it was like Wireless Festival, right? Yes. yes. And I, I don't, and I, I don't think I've ever publicly told this story. Right, but, well, right. Up. Black House Speakers Live exclusive. Come on. <laughs> Spilling the coffee, so we'll take the next cafe, mate. <laughs> so I don't think I've told this story, right? And it's not a big story, but it's yeah. still it's still something that was quite comical at the time. Mm. But so uh, uh, Jay Z comes off stage, he's with Beyonce, and then all of a sudden, as he's walking off stage, there's this huge entourage of like security and event staff and yep. press. And then there's Amy and her team and we're walking and then Amy goes up to Jay-Z and Beyonce and they're talking and I'm kind of approaching. She looks over and said, oh, come, come. So she she introduced me like, oh yeah, this is Alon, da, 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 this is uh, blah, 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 my back singer, da, da, da. Uh -huh. and they're talking. And then Amy says, Amy goes, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So even in those moments, she's like, she's like, hey, this is my boy, you know, like, this is my boy, right? So, so then she jumps in, she jumps into, uh, she goes to Jay-Z, hey man, can I jump in your car? Now in the car, there is four seats in the car, right? There's the driver, uh -huh. one security guard at front. Yes. And in the back is Jay-Z and Beyonce. That's how they wrap, that's right. how they was driving. Right. Yeah. And then behind them, they would have a convoy of security team staff. But in that particular mm. car, it was the driver. Mm. Um, it was uh, the security, Jay-Z, Beyonce. Mm -hmm. So she goes, can I jump in with you? And he's like, okay. So she jumps in now. So now Jay-Z, Amy, and Beyonce have no security. It's just them and the driver. Wow, right? wow, wow. So wow. everybody is everybody is scrambling now because everyone's like, shit, like, you know, like all the security are like, they're now trying to just get in any car yeah. to get, you know, yeah. So they're, everybody's scarpering, right? And they've gone off. So everyone's trying to catch That's up possible. or whatever. <laughs> And so um, when we got to the hotel, we went to a hotel in central London and we was like in the foyer and Beyonce was there with her team. Jay-Z, I didn't see Jay-Z at the time. Right. And um, uh, Beyonce said to me, it's nice me. She said, <laughs> yeah. she said, she said, it's nice meeting you for the second time ever. Oh, and I was like, pause, pause, pause. <laughs> she, she, like, she leaned me like that. It's nice me, it's nice me for the, like in the know was, it's nice me. I'm like, listen, man, she's smooth. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to create any extra stuff, but she's smooth. Yeah. She said classy. to me, classy. it is nice meeting you for the second time ever. She and this time, I didn't think she remembered me. Damn. That's the truth. So when she said that, I was a bit like, taken aback. I, I can't even remember what I said, but I was like thrown by it, right? The words were trying to come then, <laughs> no, we spoke. We were speaking for a little while. Just we just chit chat, right? General chit chat at the time, right? Um, because uh, it was like kind of lo lots of little bits going on. So you know, small talk, right? Um, but um, so I I never knew. I never got a chance to speak to Amy to find out. Was she, did she mention me? Mm. Like, I was kind of wondering how did Beyonce? Rem did she remember me from before? Was it like what was it? And wow. then um, a couple of months later. I saw Rita Ora. Okay. And this was when, uh, this is before Rita Ora was, was popular. Mm. Uh, 
Um, this is before she was released, but she was like hanging around that camp. So she was there. Mm. And uh, Rita says, Rita came up to me. I, I was, I was in, I went to this, like this, this VIP club. This is many months later or maybe a year later. I don't remember how long. Mm. And she came up to me and we was just chatting all night. And she was just like, Salon, like this you were singing one time and it was incredible. And I was like blown away. You've done this, this eighth note that was like That's crazy. And crazy. She, she said, she goes, I showed Beyonce and she was like, wow, like, or whatever she said, right? And I was oh, like, then it made me think, yeah. ah, I was like, maybe that's where she remembered me from. Because I wasn't sure. Uh, and so right. I still don't know whether it was because Rita had mentioned me or whether Amy had mentioned me. But I was happy either way. Not many men in their lifetime can say they got compliments from Beyonce. And in fact, not many men in their lifetime can say they met the great and worked with the great and late Amy Winehouse, brother. Brother, this sounds like this journey was preparatory for what is to come and what is happening for you now, brother. And God's bless you. And so to singers and artists that are listening to this broadcast now, would you recommend that they definitely go ahead and become backing vocalists to pursue their career? Would you, would you not? Is your mind changed on that now? Your whole opinion on that? It, you know, um, it's it's a great question. I actually don't think anyone has ever asked me that question. Black Car Speakers Lounge, baby. Come on, this is cool. <laughs> Come on now. Come on, Mike. Come on. You know, come on. I think the industry has changed. I think you have more flexibility now because you don't have to rely on the record companies to give you a shot. Brilliant. So back then, the reason why it was, so to speak, dangerous is because once they've got it locked in your head that you're not valuable or you're not special or unique or have something that is like your, your star, that, that factor, then they would never invest. Right now, you don't need that. If you can show the data or you can create the momentum yourself, it doesn't matter what you was doing before. Come on. Does that make sense? It makes right? sense. Yeah, I, I, so, someone said uh, Lufa was a backing vocalist. Cool. So was Mariah Carey. Um, Jill Scott. Yeah. Was it Jill many, Scott? Many... Sorry, uh? Jill Scott for Roots, I think she was. Yeah, Jill Scott. Um, but, you know, the, 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 uh, many of those artists are in, in, in um, um, America. Yeah, so right. As a young black, there wasn't many representations of young black guys who uh, had become even like we didn't even have many young black stars in the uk uh there wasn't like a plethora of artists mm -hmm. especially who was back in singing so it was like trying to like there was no there was no one else that you could say oh let me follow their path come on you know so you you know and you didn't want to you didn't want to gamble with your with your career just by mm -hmm. taking a gig right mm -hmm. oh we got leon in the house anthony hamilton leon mead yes my boy, man so 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 to answer your question mm -hmm. Even though I was a backing singer, I had to work hard to be taken seriously by the by others. Now this isn't this isn't Amy because Amy um, Amy was always like given opportunities and loving, but it's the people behind her, not just the people behind her, but the industry because she is like because she is like the centerpiece mm. is like. No one else can see anything but the centerpiece at the time. Yeah. Even though she said, hey, look at this guy. Mm. She's like, hey, look at this guy. And it, mm -hmm. I had to prove myself. Yeah. So what I had to do is when we got to, when we got our money from touring, I would take my money, hire her band in the same studio that she wow. recorded in. Come on. Right? And then so once I had recorded the songs, they was like, oh, like, you can't be a backing singer because you're now using the same tools that we use to create. Jeez. Create products. So they're like, oh, like we need to start taking you more seriously. I had managed to get a song with like Mark Ronson. This time, Mark Ronson was like one of the hottest producers. Come on. And it's bro. like, now it's like, we can't treat you just as a backing singer because you've now got one of the hottest, hottest uh, producers. How did you do that? I started getting mentioned in the press. Wow. Like, how did you do that? So I had to really be be consistent and clear, really, really clear on what mm. it is that I want to do. Now here's here's the trick. I'm gonna I'm gonna give people a 
uh, a little trick that I'd done when I was on tour. And, and, and this is what helped me to navigate. Because here's the thing. This little trick can help you to achieve your goals, right? It's a little trick that I use, right? Listen, people. Now, first, now, firstly, you have to have clarity on what you want. If you don't have clarity on what you want, everything sounds like a good idea. Woo! Everything sounds like a good idea. Mm. You can be a good idea. Like if anybody, if anybody meant says something to you, you'd be like, yeah, this is great. But if you don't know where you're going, right? Anything can be a good or a bad idea. It just depends on where you're going, right? Just brother. So I had to have clarity on where it is that I wanted to go. And then I imagine, I, 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 in every month, like we can only change things in the present moment. We can't change the past. We can't change the future, right? Come on. So everything is present. So in this present moment, I always imagined there was two doors. One door that was taking me one step closer towards that goal. Jeez. And one door that was taking me one step further away from that. And literally... So when I would get my tour money, it's like, oh, should I go and just like go out to the clubs and ball out? Or should I hire the band and go in studio and create my product? Listen, people, yeah. investment. <laughs> Come on, bro. Come on. Brilliant. That's brilliant, brother. That is so brilliant. You know, and um, <clears throat> you see, brother, I'm going to ask you a question now. What was your favorite song? out of all of Amy Winehouse's songs. What was your favorite song? Because we talked about some favorite moments there, but what was your favorite songs or song <laughs> from our sister with Amy Winehouse? I had two. I had two. Um, by the way, um, <clears throat> I uh, just to, to bring context, I asked the fans, for Amy's 10-year anniversary of her passing, I asked the fans to ask me questions and I'll answer them on my YouTube channel. And um, I asked him to ask me a question, and that's one of the ones that came up. So um, I'm going to answer it for you now, but yes, just sir. to let you guys know, all the rest of the questions, I'll, I'll make sure I put it on my YouTube channel. So the first one was tears, tears dry, tears run dry, tears, tears, what tears? Oh, God. Uh, tears. Let's have a look at that one. Tears run dry. Sorry, my mind's gone blank. Anyone? Tears, tears run dry to our audience. Also, name your favorite ones as well. We're with Zalon sure. right now. Back in vocal. My mind vocalist. just went blank. Yeah. <laughs> What's Amy's song again, Tears? Tears. Um, <laughs> da, 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 Let's have a look. Right. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Okay. Tears dry on their own. Oh, my God. Tears dry on their own. You know, like, yeah, thank, thank you guys thank you. so much. Thank you, know, you like, everybody. You know, oh, we got Martha. Hey, babe. Uh, you know, you know, you know, like when your mind goes know, dead, but someone's just like, hey, tell me a song, and then your mind goes dead. That just happens. No, but yeah. people are, oh, I'll, I'll spell your name cool now. I had a moment, I went, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it happens, it can happen, it can happen. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's it. Tears dry. Thank you, Martha. I love you. Uh, tears dry on their own. Big up, Martha. Uh, that was my favorite one. I loved it. I loved nice. it. I loved it. Nice. Um, I also, I also loved, um, she, um, uh, Valerie. She had a book, huh? Valerie. No, no, it wasn't Valerie. Okay. She had a, so put it in the box. So in the chorus, it's like, put it in the box, put it in the box. And like, it, it was, um, uh, it was the way how the, 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 the drama was playing and uh -huh. it was in syncopation. It was just like, great. But I enjoyed performing. Come on. Hey, little rich girl. Okay. Take the box. Right. Yeah. Hey, little rich girl, because that was the song that I got a feature on. So I loved her song. I love when she performed uh -huh. Tears Run Dry, um, but I preferred Hey Little Rich Girl because it got a chance for us to like sing a duet together. Hey Little Rich Girl, yeah? Jeez, let me yeah. try and find that now. Hey Little Rich Girl. And you you sung, obviously you sung on that yourself? Yeah. So let me tell, let me tell you a little story very quickly about this, uh, um, this song, right? Go ahead. So we're, we are we are in the the, the rehearsal rooms, right? Mm. And we are literally the band. They give us a song because it's a cover song, and the band is just playing around. And then Amy turns around and she's like on the bridge, Zal, sing this. <laughs> and so I think we've done three takes of it. And I was like, I'm trying to work out how to put my stamp on it. Yeah, how to how to like make it unique. So you know, it's kind of all over the place, right? Uh -huh. And then I find 
uh, um, but I didn't know the words. So if you listen to the recording, you will hear me mumble because right. I didn't know the word and they kept it because that was a take. So if you yeah. hear it, it goes, Hey little rich girl, love for you is gone. I didn't know what I was saying. Now little rich girl, I know where you belong. Right? Because, because at that time, I didn't know the word because it was so fresh. It's like, we heard it that day, mm -hmm. we recorded it that day, and then, um, oh, somebody said, I thought that was intentional. Nah, it was not intentional. Yeah. It was, <laughs> it was, I didn't know, I just didn't know the words. Like, I didn't know the words, but sorry, I didn't, I couldn't think of the words in that particular moment. So another take, I probably don't sang it, sang it great, Beautiful. the words, but this was the best take. Beautiful. You know? Beautiful. Yeah. So it, it's become like, you know, I didn't know the words at that time. So I kind of just freestyled it, you know? And, improvisation. Um, call it improvisation, bro. It is what it is, So, you know? so I, was in, I was in the dome. So, so afterwards, uh, when I heard it back, I got a call from Sam Best, who's a guitar piano player. I've heard it. Sam, yes, Sam Best, yes. He says to me, hey, Zalo, man, that part that you sing in, in Amy's song is sick. I said, what are you talking about? And I said, I, I went to the email, checked it, listened to it. And I said, oh, this is cool. I was like, when's this coming out? Right? Um, and, then, and then he turns around, and then he turns around. And then I go to, I go to Darkus, who's Amy's A&R, head A&R at the time. And I said, hey, I'm singing quite a lot on this song. Can I get a feature? Oh, come on. Come on and ask. And he, yes. and, and he says, um... He says, hey, man, don't ask me. you got to ask Amy. Woo! Right? And I'm thinking, oh, my God. Like, oh, my God. Oh. If you don't ask, right. don't get. Yeah, I was just like, oh, man, i got to ask what, Amy. How did you feel when you knew you yeah, had to ask I, I, Amy? I felt, uh, man, I just felt like, you know what it is? <laughs> She's always been loving and kind, but I just didn't want her to say no. Mm. I just didn't want it, you know, it, I just didn't want it to be like, you know, you ask for something, someone says no, or they feel it's uncomfortable. Yeah. I didn't, yeah, I didn't want to, I didn't want to, I didn't want to overstep my boundary. I hear you. You know, but I knew that, that being on this song was really important. Mm. It was really important um, because I never started out to try and be a, 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 a backing singer. And I had yes, dedicated all of this time. And, and I was so this for that. Like, Huh? I'm a witness to that. I met you singing, yeah. bruv, singing, not singing, singing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I had dedicated all of this 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 time. Um, <clears throat> so I went up to her, you know, found the right moment. Block up the courage. <laughs> and I was like, uh, Amy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, um, I'm I'm singing quite a bit on this song. Um, is it all right if I get a feature? <laughs> and she's like, of course, Sal. Thanks for asking. Thanks she says for upfront. asking. She's an upfront woman, brother. I get that vibe that she was an upfront she said, woman. She was about all bro, that. it was better than I thought, bro. She said, thanks for asking. Wow. Yeah, man. Because you've got a lot of people in the industry who will do um, some skullduggery, but the fact that you approach with humility and reverence she rated you even more. You went up higher in rate in ratings for her. You know, she felt like it was an honor for for to have me on there. And she's a big artist now. She is officially <coughs> Amy Kindhouse. Like she's, do you know what I mean? Mm. And so I knew that the ve I knew that the mere fact mm. of being as a featured artist, yes, sir, would not just allow me to, to for, for, for me to be like to start carving out a career mm. but would be known for like ever because she was oh. so so you know yes sir um and so she said thanks for asking and um, i'm very grateful to her it's like these conversations that doesn't doesn't happen uh -huh. you know in the mainstream uh is is what you remember you know yes, it wasn't just like it wasn't just like, okay, or, okay, go on then. It was like, of course. It was received. Awesome. Yes. Yes. And that was real. That's genuine. That was real. You know? And um, 
I want to big up my guy, um, my brethren. I ain't seen him for a while, Nolan Weeks. He was he was one of the models and actors in a music video. You shared. I know Nolan. Yeah, I remember I know Nolan. Him. Nolan Weeks from Three Plus One, Spoken Word. Yeah, trio. I remember him. You know, uh, Natalie from uh, Flow a Tree. She started from Three yeah. Plus One. Uh, Carl Ramsey, Darwood, Nolan Weeks, and Nolan being a model and a pretty boy, he was um, in a video. You should be stronger than me, and he was all acting drunk and all that. And I called. I said, Nolan, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing at that video? <laughs> but you know, you know, him up, man. And it was it was a circle of us, and I'm so happy. No, um, Nolan and everyone else, Natalie, yourself, brother, you just went astronomical and your journey continues bro your journey absolutely continues go ahead i i i want to i want to add something and then i want to ask you a question as well just very quickly so absolutely. yes sir. when you're talking about you called him was like hey what are you doing right so i want to say that kind of happened to me as well so uh when we first started we was doing these uh these dances right we was in everything kind of came organic come right? on we was doing these dances and so a day was like Ade, Ade, um, vocal, singer Ade. Uh, Papa Ade, Ade the singer, vocal teacher. Yeah, he's the singer. Yeah, but he was working with Amy as well. Love Ade, man. Love Ade. Oh, he's incredible. He's incredible. Love. Incredible voice, right? Mm. So we kind of just was like making up these dances in rehearsals. It was like, yeah, guys, just keep that. And so we would we basically kept that, right? But then I remember now we started doing it. And my mom's friend calls her up one day and say, what's Zalon doing on TV doing them stupid bad things? Did mom's meet Amy? Did, did mom's meet Amy? Yeah, yeah, my mom wow. met Amy, my dad met Amy. He came to a show, oh, I brought yeah. my grandparents down. Because my grandparents, you know, when I was trying, when I was starting out trying to be a singer, right? Mm. Um, they, they, they often would tell me to go and learn a trade. You know, like we'll a singer, a, like a doctor, a nurse, a mechanic. Oh. You know, they didn't they didn't really take singing seriously, right? Yes. Um, and so uh, it was nice for me to be able to share with them where I had gone to and what I was doing. They were so proud. Like, I, I remember when I, I remember at the Christmas table. This is before I went on tour. She wasn't popular as popular, and I said, "They're like, oh, so so." They was asking me, uh, "I want you to make an accent." It was like saying, "So, what are you gonna do this year then?" With this music, music business, mm. I said, "Oh, I'm gonna go on tour with this, 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 this girl called uh, Amy Winehouse. Who's Amy? Who's Amy Winehouse? Right? <laughs> it was like, you know, it wasn't serious. I can and imagine. Then, I can imagine. Cut to, cut to a few years later, it's like, oh, how's Amy Winehouse? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we will come to the show. Like, they're so proud. They're so proud. They're so proud. They came to the shows. They met. And, you know, it was like such beauty. It was so beautiful to see." how proud they were oh, and it was like you know so you know we give thanks beautiful beautiful so brother you know what man i must say bro and by the way people any questions put your questions forward and it will come up on the question mark logo and we will be happy zalan will be happy to entertain your questions with answers <laughs> fire away quickly because we're not going to take zalan's time we thank him for his time we thank him for the livication Amy Winehouse Levocation. We want to know more. Obviously, we want to know about Zalon. What's next for you, my brother? I saw, I, I, I watched the song. I know you've done it in 2012, brother, but it's timeless. And it's a, an official Amy Winehouse tribute. Let me breathe. You let me breathe, breathe. yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Brother. Thank you. I'm going to be, I'm going to do what you did with Amy Winehouse. I'm going to ask, um, could, would you sing a verse from, from that oh, song? Oh, my God, you're killing me. <laughs> For the audience, um, and I've got I've got a first question here. I'm going to look at the question, right? And that's from this is from Port for Lornia. Excuse me if I mispronounce your name. And she asked, "What was your favorite tour memory?" I think we did go kind of answer that question, but there's a question we're saying, "What was your favorite tour memory?" Who? There's so many. Um, yeah. I think it was just like. Um... <clears throat> I think Brazil. I think mm -hmm. when we got to Brazil, mm -hmm. we had got into our stride. Come Everybody on. knew what they was doing. And um, I, I, this was the first time when I had 15 minutes in the middle of our world tour. So there was a different level of, 
of appreciation, love and respect from the team. Uh, but so, uh, you know, sometimes when, you, when you've got something that is so uh, big, there's ego. Yeah. Right? There's yeah. Ego. Mm. A lot of ego. And, um, and, and, and maybe it's not just ego. Maybe it's because people have responsibilities or yeah. whatever it is. But that was the first time when I felt uh, it started to feel a bit more like there was a bit more respect. Yes, you know? real, um, real. Not for me, as I said, just from the people behind. And um, uh, Brazil, I felt like, um, I mean, I feel indebted to Brazil because it was the first time that I performed in front of so many people in 2000, and wow. I think it was 11. In 2013 was the first time I had my first international solo tour. Yes. And that's what made me, like, it, it kind of started my career. And then I would say 2015 was when I headlined a festival, my first festival. Mm -hmm. So um, the tour, I would say, that kicked off everything was the Brazilian tour. Right. Go ahead. Yeah. Come on. Beautiful. And we have another question here. Beautiful answer, brother. Uh, from Amy's Mermaids. Amy's underscore mermaids. Big up, Amy's underscore mermaids. Question or point is, I remember reading you and Amy enjoyed uh, enjoyed Kanye's college dropout album. Which song on there did you both enjoy singing? I think she she remembers meeting you or seeing you. You and Amy enjoyed Ka uh, Kanye West's college dropout album. Which song on that album did you enjoy uh, both enjoy singing? Oh. <laughs> um, I don't know if this is on this album, but the song that we enjoyed uh, singing was, a, I think it's Foolish. So, um, I'm, I'm calling out to all my ladies and babies and I can't be with no one but you, baby. And they, something like that. You know, there's a there's a the, uh, there's like a Kanye West feature or remixy song, but we used to sing that a lot on the Bible. I'm, I'm on the tour bus. We loved it. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And Dara, uh, people, big flames for the voice, man. Come on, voice. Oh, <laughs> Dara sixty two asks, what do you think about French music? Pas de vos français, pas de vos anglais. What do you think, I think about French music? I, I think da uh, Darius uh, 62, please send me some because I don't think I have uh, I've have digested enough. Um, I like I love music. I like all types of music. Honest, um, that's good. But I, but I can't say there's anything that stands out that I know. But send me your best music that you like so mm. I can have a listen and I can really focus on. Beautiful, beautiful. And I've got a question for you. Have we been talking about this for ages? We got I, have a, I have a question for you. Oh, afterwards. you've got a question for me. Go ahead. <clears throat> so, no, so, um, my, so for me, obviously, I was going on a journey. You've known me for many years. What was it like looking at it from your side, the, the journey? For me, brother, it didn't surprise me. Because when I first met you, when we were on the circuit, and I said, that brother's a superstar your talent, not only your, your voice, not only your singing ability, but it was you, the man, that backed up and undergirded that talent that was the most important thing. And I said, because of not only your charisma and because of how you relate to people and connect to people, you're going to be successful. And I think a lot of people underestimate the fact that you need to have character, charisma, and other things going for you as a human being, as well as the talent. Talent only accounts for twenty percent. So I I didn't surprise me. So when I'm sitting down, I'm like, "Well, I know him." So it was a delight to see you on the television. It was delight a delight to see you singing with Amy. But it didn't surprise me because I'm like, "Yeah, this brother's a winner." So for me, it was a joy, and it motivated me in my in my craft. And so, yeah, we can do this. I know that brother. He's doing right. it. Okay. He looks like me. I can do it. And I love right. what he's doing. So that's what it was. Okay. It didn't surprise me. And I was ecstatic, brother, ecstatically happy for you. Thank you. And everyone I knew that 
we, we all started out on a circuit or oh, in South Bank University doing our thing, seeing everyone blow up Estelle, yeah. uh, Natalie, Nolan, John ZD, Ty, rest in peace, Ty, um, so many others, bruv. So it didn't surprise me because it was just, as we didn't have Instagram and Facebook back then. We had to perform. We Our craft was on the stage live yeah. at 291 Club Hackney or the Apollo. Yeah. We, yeah. It's either you're hot or you're not. And you smashed yeah. it. You were doing Troy Bar on Tuesdays in Shoreditch. Smashed yeah. it. You know? Um, you know yeah. You know, no, one thing that I will never get the opportunity to is to see what the show felt like on the other side. Right. So how people connected with it, I'll never get that experience because I was in it. Yes. You know? Um, <clears throat> and, and, and I remember, right, so... There was, I can't remember what this installation, I think it's called Secret Cin Cin Secret Cinema. That's right. And what, yeah, and what they've done is they take on different themes. So if it's yeah. Star Wars, they dress up everywhere as Star Wars. So they've done an Amy Winehouse um, theme when she was released, when the documentary was being released. Right. And the band was performing and um, I wasn't able, I, I, I chose at the time, I, I had other stuff I was doing, so I wasn't able to commit to everything to be a part of the show yes sir. um somebody asked me about omar I'll ask that question in a second but um, mm. i was able to be a part of the band and so i sat down in the audience and listened to people <clears throat> dressing and performing and they they, they dress the stage just like yeah. amy stage yeah and when i heard the music the band's playing the music and the whole stage was like how amy stage was i was like Oh my God, this is amazing. Come it on. felt like, it felt like I was for the first time an audience member and I was blown away with how sweet the music sounded and like how it changed from this and like, like how every, like the syncopation, how the band gelled together and the choice of sounds and, and the songs and the words. Like I felt, I felt like I only got a small snippet of right. what it was like being at a live show. Wow. Um, and, wow. and, and, I, and I felt it touched me. And I wasn't sure if it was the nostalgia or if it was just the fact that I could just be detached enough to get a true representation. Yes. You know? I think it's and, um, mm. Yeah. But I felt like that's the closest I've ever been to experiencing what it would have been like on the journey um, watching this, watching Beautiful. the essence of the, the, the thing at the time. Oh, and also having someone like her perform. You know, mm. every show being different. So, yeah. Oh, my brother. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Someone asked the question regarding uh, Omar. You said Omar? Was it Omar? Yeah, um, Omar. So, um, Omar, like, as I've grown more as an independent artist, and um, I, I realized how, how challenging the industry is and how long Omar's been doing, doing it for, um, my respect for Omar has absolutely gone through. <laughs> Legend. Not, yeah, not just that alone, but nothing like this is one of my... One of my most favorite songs growing up, um, it was just something that captivated me. And a few years ago, I presented him an award and I sang his song as a surprise while he was in the audience. So Omar, I mean, I've spoken to him and I'm like, yo, we got, we, you know, we need to get in studio and it's just, you know, just getting the right time for us to do it. But like, I just feel like, um, you know, if my intention is to, to really, you know, one day to dominate soul in an international level, you know, like to, to really be like, um, is like Omar <clears throat> definitely is like he's the godfather that, Come on. that uh, I, I I give absolute like respect to like I just think I I just I just think I just think he's just incredible I just really yeah. think yeah he's just authentically himself and has been all this time Neo you know? told before Neo soul he was that's what he, Omar was for me personally. There's nothing like this. Boom. School do doom 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 doom. Sit uh 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 Listen. Listen. <laughs> Listen. Jeez. Beautiful. Oh, Mark. Beautiful. So, Beautiful. another question from, okay. Official Stop the Silence. What would you say to young producers? especially to one or two who are staying away from the grime, et cetera, but will listen to songs with more arrangements in them, like Earth, Wind and Fire, et cetera, so that they can change the frequency. In other words, sure. yeah. 
I think I think that um, you got to trust your magic. Um, I think that you should like. You see, the illusion is right that the songs that are popular are the best songs. Mm. That's the illusion. Come on. Quite often, the songs that are popular have had the most money promoting. Them. Right. So they're not the best song. They've just had somebody spend money. On them. <laughs> so you have to seek out what's good to you, whether it's in current day or previously, and then you have to like either create from new or be inspired by those because <laughs> that for me is now we're in a phase where it's about creating a community. So I knew that when I was doing soul music, right, I know that it's not the current trendy thing, but it was authentic to me. And that's the lane that I'm happy to be in. And I, like, at this point, I'm happy to just take it all the way, wherever it goes. And yeah. Yeah. like, it, it may, it may stay at this level or it <clears> may go up. Right. <clears throat> but that is me connecting with something that I feel is true and that I connect to it rather mm. than just trying to just make any style of music. Because I did try to do that once. Right. Like, when, Amy, when Amy signed me to her label, I thought, ah, you know, to be big like her, wow. I'm going to do everything. I'm going to be, I'm going to be like, I'm going to do rock, I'm going to do pop, I'm going to do soul, I'm going to do everything. And then one day she came to me and goes, Alon, listen, if you were to sing dustbin bags, dustbin bags, dustbin bags, and it was authentic, they would love you for that. <laughs> <laughs> And then that's when I started thinking about, well, if I'm not just trying to create it just to be famous, well, what do I like? And I said, well, what did I, what did I, what did I grow up listening to? And I listened to 90s R&B. Yes, sir. And so then, but, then, but then the new R&B, I found it a bit boring, if I'm honest. So I said, well, who did the 90s R&B listen to? And then that's how I found mm -hmm. Motown. And then when I found Motown, I discovered Marvin Gaye, and I was like, oh, my God, like, this is as close to me. Like, I can see myself in him. Um, uh, yeah, I can see myself in him. He's a so... What I loved about him is he spoke about love. Yeah. He's talked about... He talked about making love. He talked about breaking love. Mm. He talked about uh, the temptations of love. Yes. He talked about uh, heartbreak. He talked mm -hmm. about everything around love. Mm. But he also was a social commentator, comment commentating on um on world issues things yes. that's happening in the world yeah so like my song right um my song erica was not originally written as as um, erica it was originally written about the media right so the song if you listen to the song again the song was created around the time when mark duggan was shot by police yes. And what happened is the press were saying that all of these, uh, these, you know, uh, all of these um, street kids are like, or all these people are like creating, um, they're rioting and they're, they're, they're destroying shops and all these things. And, and, and it wasn't, it was peaceful, but it was like really stirring things up in the mm -hmm. media. And then one day I was, I was, I had a, I had a nap and I got this ring on my doorbell mm -hmm. and the, it, it woke me up. It was like, Ring! wow. And I woke up and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I just had this image that something bad had happened to my brother. Shoot. So I ran to the door and it was the postman. He just couldn't fit the post. And I was so on edge because I thought, oh my God, like the mm -hmm. media, I thought, why do I feel like this? And I felt, mm -hmm. it's the media. Like the yes. media was yes. creating all this emotion in me. And so right. in 20 minutes, I just wrote this song. Media, media, stop telling those lies. Stop telling us what and when and start telling us why. Tell the whole truth, media. The truth, no more, no less. Lead us from confusion and the land of second guess. Take control, media. Open oh. up our heart. The lies have got to stop and the truth has got to start. Do the right thing, media. Call it by its name. What you're doing? What's the rules of this game? Come on now, media. This time you've gone too far. Um, don't play the innocent with me because I know just who you are. Come on. Second verse. Propaganda, propaganda. Sex, drugs, lies and slander. Is there hope over the meander? Letting my mind wander, right? So, Jeez. so, so when I when I when I wrote that song, when I wrote that song, I brought it to my 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 producer, and he's like, "Zalon is too political." Right. I said, 
I said, I'm not changing it. He said, Zalon is too political. Yeah. I said, I am not changing it. Standing on your script, then, go ahead. And then my 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 producer, Jacqueline Pelham Lee, loved that girl. Uh, she she helped a lot with crafting the album and everything, right? She said, Zalon, have you ever been in a situation where you felt like uh, a woman that you was with felt like she was trying to be too smart for you, like being tricky kind of thing? And I said, yeah, I do. She said, what about Erica, Erica? And I said, Woo! I said, well, you know what? I relate to that. So yeah, we could do that. And so that is how it changed from media, media to Erica, Erica. So if you listen to that song and you go back and you change Erica, Erica to media, media, you will see what the song was initially about. And then so it came Erica, Erica about a girl being too smart for me. And um, uh, when I went to Cuba, that video was shot in Cuba. And um, yeah, we created the video. Wow, beautiful, 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 bro. And you know what? In terms of social commentary, um, I know and I had a feeling, I never met Amy once, but I feel in the spirit realm through you, bro, I'm meeting her, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I feel she was that person who was also frustrated but wanted to make change she saw the world for what it really is and i feel that her fans who didn't see that world but she wanted to communicate to the fans but the media the word media means to mediate to get in between and she was not about i just have a feeling that amy was not about the nonsense and the bs no no she wasn't and 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 you know man it's it's really difficult to explain how they were like wolves. Yes. And she was like prey. Like literally, when, uh, if you ever see, if you ever look online at paparazzi, right, hmm. it's like a frenzy. It's not like they take a picture at a safe, reasonable distance, which they can, because they're taking a picture. Right. Yeah. They're literally scuffling, like over yeah, fighting right. over each other, mm. this drops over each other, and you know, it, it's awful, so much so. So Amy, where she lived, and I, and, I, and I don't know who chose this place for her, where she lived, normally if you guys are there, they, she, in the UK, right, we have these little, um, outside your house, like when you, your front door, you normally have like, I don't know what it is, like a section, like a wall around. Yeah, a I know, small yeah. Kind of section, like, like a partition a court, kind of thing. Yeah, so that, that is still seen um, uh, that, that is still seen as this is her, as, is your house. It's usually where you put your bins. That's right. right? Anything beyond the right. express passing, that's right. Amy never had that. So literally where the street is, this is her door. So if this is the street that you're walking, anybody can walk on the street, but you you can't really walk on someone's yard, like on their, on their thing, right? So, but her house was on the street. The door was on the street. So people could literally just ring the doorbell 24 hours a day. Amy, come out, Amy, right? 24 hours a day, they would ring her doorbell, right? But what they would do is, let's say she they parked the car as close, as close. Um, somebody said to put this on YouTube. We will. Yeah, this we is will. YouTube. We'll be doing it on YouTube, Black Car Speakers Lounge, Black Film Institute. And, and, and listen, I, I revealed some information. I'll also put mine up. I'll put it up on mine as well. Absolutely. And we'll spread it up so as many people can see what we're speaking about here as well. Yes. So what Amy, what Amy done is she would park the car right next to the door, mm. right? And then, so what would happen is she then let her out. And she has to literally walk <laughs> from the car maybe four or five steps and she's in her house. But that is their moment to make their money. And, you know, they can make grand, hundreds of grand from getting the right picture. So what they would do, they'd literally take the camera and then ram it in her face or slap her head. So what happens is, so you imagine you're walking like this. Bro, but we never somebody. heard about this in the media, the abuse. We never, who knew? I never knew this. This is the first time I'm hearing this. It was awful. They would slap her in the head or take the camera and ram it in her head. So when she looks up, she's like, like, you know, what a All oh, right. Yeah. Then now it plays into the narrative of, oh, look, it's Amy Winehouse again. Devils. And, they've made them, and then they've made their money. Do you understand? Devils. Like, 
this was going this was going on right I, like there is uh this videos on youtube a mermaid said there's video on youtube of how they would how, how they would would treat her right they they these um people would make stories and i would be like huh that didn't happen i was here that didn't happen. listen listen <laughs> They, 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 it, 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 man, it hurt my heart. They, uh -huh. There was stuff that used to, that people would, 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 would just, uh, yeah, it breaks my heart, bro. It yes, really bro. breaks my heart. I feel you. Um, and so, you know, even when she passed, man, before, you see, when the film came out, right? I mean, the film can't tell all the story, but it can tell a story. It tells, it tell, it gives a perspective. I learned a lot. I learned a lot um, from the film myself because there was a lot that I didn't know because I only met her as a, por a portion of life. You know, I, I only knew her for like six years, right? Mm -hmm. And um, the six years we toured together, but um, she had a, a whole life before, right? I didn't know all the things that was leading up to it. And also there were things, when I met her, there was things that was going on behind the scene that I also didn't know. That was happening mm. you know and i also learned a lot from watching the um the, the the documentary right um um but i remember when she first passed away mm. the world believed a lot of what the media was saying and they were very nasty yes and it hurt it hurt and you know i had to find the right balance mm. between trying to honor her name so that people could understand that there was more than this media narrative right mm. but also not coming across as an opportunist yes sir as someone that is trying to just try to ride off of her name for stuff mm. you understand so i had to be it was a very hard time because I wanted to do it, mm. and I don't, and, and 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 as well, it was at a hard. It was like it was just so hard, you know. Brother, and so and you. You know, everybody deals with it at a different times. So when the movie came out, it gave a bit more context, and I felt like the public opinion changed because they didn't just see her as this character, but they understood who she was as a person, and that she was a human being that was just navigating her way through life, and had trials and tribulations as well. and she, she 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 had trials and tribulations mm. she wore a heart on her sleeve she 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 wasn't perfect but she didn't pretend to be perfect she she done she was just doing she was authentically being herself absolutely and when you are authentically yourself it means that everybody doesn't agree with you or, or, or like everything that you do but it's one of the hardest things is to authentically be yourself and not care about judgment or to be vilified, right? That is one of the hardest things in life. Mm -hmm. And she stood for her truth, no matter what it meant, no matter who was watching, no matter who said what. But how can adults, like, I, I, you know, they, you know, she's a woman. Come on. Right? She's a woman, right? And the things that they used to say about her in the press, talking about how she looks, this is nothing, this is nothing to do with her music. And your opinions you keep to yourself. Come on. To push out the narrative to millions of people about how a woman looks and degrading her. Like, it's not cool. And it was it was it was it was said across the media consistently. And their voice, because they're in the press, is the loudest. You slander. Understand? It was slander and so, defamation so, of her character. So, so even when I was writing this song, when I was when I first wrote the song Erica, and it was about media. The reason why it flowed out is because it was all of that emotion of you guys lie, you guys deceive. It's just propaganda. You're just self-serving. Like you guys don't care the the devastation, destruction that you cause. You don't care about how you are altering public opinion. You just don't care. Like like where's the compassion? Where's the love? Like where's the truth? Like you are at the other end. You're not just a media. You're a person. You're a human being. Come on. Like, why are you doing this? Why are you? Why are you adding to this? You know. Um, so, yeah, man, it was a very, 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 very hard time. 
Um, so you know, yeah. even my, even my, even, even, even the video, man. You know, when I put out "You Let Me Breathe," it was to paint a new narrative. It was to create a new storyline that people could see there was more to her, right? There was more to her. There was more that was going on than just what you see as the headline. Absolutely. You know, if if I take, if I was to film your whole life and I was just to take out the bad parts of your life, people would look Sound at you and say, "Oh, you're this way." But no one can be one way because, you know, today we're happy, today we're sad, today we like red, tomorrow we like blue. Yeah, we're, we're gonna, gonna have a moment. Like moment. Like blue, you know? And a lot, so, yeah. and a lot of people, Zellum, are you know the young ones today. And this is why the football, England versus Italy. Let's just take color away from it. Those two Should young we? men that missed the penalty. They're making a lot of money every week. A lot of people look at them and think, yeah, I want what they got. I'm telling you, and I'm telling people out here, you don't want, and I, please, brother, Zana, let's say this so loud so those in the cheap seats can hear, you don't want fame so quickly because you have no privacy. The tabloids, the media will shape the narrative. You, they will have people that love you, hate you, the pen is mightier than a sword. I keep saying this. The media is so powerful that they'll have... It's like the movie The Running Man. That is one of the most perfect examples where an innocent man can be demonized just by technology. If you remember the movie Running Man, one of my favorite action movies by Arnold Schwarzenegger, he was an innocent man trying to protect innocent people, but in order to get the mob, the mob against him, they had to manipulate digital images, media, to get the mob to say, boo, we don't like you, we hate you. And he, the whole journey of that movie was him to get the truth to the people, man. And brother, I saw through the, as somebody put it there, we saw through the media nonsense and the media BS. I was in America when a lot of, I'm like, this is not true. Yeah, everyone has their off moments. Everyone has their down moments. We're all human, as you were saying, Zellum. So people yeah. are running fame, be very mindful, and that's why I'm glad, brother, you've been prepared, prepared for fame because you've been on the tour, you've seen it. You were protecting her like a big brother. I feel that you were like a protector. Absolutely. But listen, bro, I'll be honest. I don't want fame. Go ahead. Tell people. Tell I, people. Don't, I don't want fame, man. I want impact. And for me, I see it as something completely different. You know? Um, like fame, fame is when they're in your bins checking your stuff, right? Jeez. That's when you, when your doctor's selling stories on you. Like, I don't care for all of that. I don't care for all of that. I don't care for being famous. I want to create impact. When I say impact, like, I feel, um, um, what's it? Um, what's her name? Kanye's ex-wife. What's her uh, name? Kim Kardashian. Kim Kardashian is famous. Right, I feel Adele and Sade has impact. When I say that, yes, is they create music. Everybody wants to hear it. Love they come it. to the show, and then they go and live their life. My life is not my life is not everybody's life. I don't want my life to be everybody's life. I'm a human being. I want to share my music and share journeys and stories, just like. You know, you have friends and family you catch up with. Yeah. But you don't want every part of your life to be exposed to your friends and family. You don't. Come on. That's me. I don't. Like, I want to live life and I want to enjoy life. Teacher. I don't want to feel like a prisoner. Like, I, I, I'm not willing to trade it. Come I'm on. Not willing to, I'm not willing to trade my life um, for to be known. Mm. That's not what I want. But I want to create impact. It doesn't mean I don't want to reach millions of people. It doesn't mean I don't mm. want to perform. Right, but I don't want to trade life because I, I I used to I used to want to be famous, right? But Amy once said to me, "It's not real." Come I on, like, I want you to repeat that. Amy Winehouse, <laughs> multi award winner, superstar, said these words. Go ahead, Zalen. She said it's not real, and I was like. Like, I pondered on it for, like, years. Mm. Like, what did she mean? It's not real. Like, like everyone knows who you are. It's damn well real. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> and what happened is, I mean, I think life is a great teacher. And, you know, 
um, here's, here's, here's what I, 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 I discovered. So I, I have fan bases in different parts of the world. In some countries, it's stronger than others. To those places where it's stronger, I am the most famous thing on earth, or I am famous, right? So to speak, or I am, oh my God, it's Zal, I'm like, ah! <laughs> other thing, to other, in other places, it's like, all right, Zal, or they don't know who I am. So fame is a perception. <laughs> it's in the eye of the beholder. It's wow. in how that person perceives you. So you can go to one place and you're famous, another place you're just, oh, you're just Amy, whatever. I don't care. Yeah. Or you might not just like that type of music. I don't care. Oh, you might be known. I don't care. Or I just don't know. It's because it's yep. not. It's not. It's it's not constant. Mm. It's not. Um. It's it, it, and it changes mm. because you can have someone who's famous today, and then the next five years they're no longer. You don't see them or feel about them the same way. So it's not. It's not a real. It's not something tangible. Yeah. That is, yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. That's what my interpretation. Is, you know. So. Living in that, especially when it came to like in our kind of uh, our like touring community, like yes. when I say community, me and like the culture in Amy's band, and everything was like we don't feed into that fame stuff. Like sure. we don't care. About it. So that was the culture. Like if anybody did, uh, uh, I'm gonna somebody's asked this question a, a, a few times. Yeah, I'm I'm sure as well. About Amy's album, but mm -hmm. yeah, um, a few. Uh, it, we never cared about uh, the fame stuff. So if you if you was a person who was excited about fame, everyone mm. looking sideways like we did, man. Like so, I, I, I'm grateful because I came under I came under the tutelage of authenticity. Mm. Of yeah. Not worrying about all of that. Like yeah, we don't bro. care about. It, you know what I mean? Um. So this person has asked like three or four times. Uh -huh. My name is T J S Conman eighty five. Was Amy recording new stuff? What would her next album sound like? I have seen your message. Um. Uh. What would that album sound like? To be honest, I don't know. We have got, I have a duet with Amy. Mm. Um, uh, of course, Stagger Lee. She had a few recordings um, and they haven't released it. And I don't think they ever will release it. Um, but if it ever is released, um, it's called Stagger Lee and we do wow. a little duet with a cover song. Um, she started writing again. Um, uh, so I went to Miami to record um, it was Lioness Hidden Treasures, and that was with Salam Remy. He produced half of her album. Salam Remy. From everyone from Lauren Hill to to from, from the days of Shabaranks to Mariah Carey. He done everyone, 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 everyone. Yeah. Um, but um, um, uh, I, I went and I done some backing vocals and backing vocal arrangement on the Lioness Hidden Treasures. That was the last piece of her work with Amy. What she done is. She didn't go in studio and do loads and loads and loads of takes. No, what she would do is she would stay and she would sit with the song for like two, three days, working out every detail. And then she would go in the studio and just do two takes. Wow. So they didn't even have, I've never heard anybody doing that. <laughs> they don't even have loads of footage, um, loads of audio of her. They just have just enough. And it was just crazy because she, she would work, she would literally spend days figuring it out. Is it this? Is it that? Blah, blah, blah. Works it out. Then when she goes to the booth, she just does it in two takes, done. Jeez. Because she's done the work beforehand. Me, if you see, I'll be on take 150, <laughs> 56. Yeah. Oh! Like, a, no, that's rubbish. Let's do it again. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I came up under. Yeah. Uh, let me see, there's another question. Um, you already had made an impact in music. You make your creativity and your showmanship. It's still grand and amazing, man. Thank you so much. Hmm. Uh, you're famous in your own right. You know your worth. Thank you guys so okay. much. You're too nice. I don't ever want to be famous, blah, blah, blah. And you know what? Love Salam. You know, another thing is, right? Also, I've always wanted to, like, legacy is really important to me. Come on. And um, I, I, I'm, I'm very aware that even when I die, the work that I've done will last long below, beyond my life. And so there's, there's a, a fulfillment which I have in knowing that I've already done something that lives on because we can't take anything with us, right? Uh -huh. We can only leave, leave to the world, right? So I know that the work that I've done with Amy, the featuring, the things that I'm doing now will live on. And I'm just very grateful for that. In this lifetime, mm -hmm. even more than everything, the money and blah, blah, is being able to leave, leave to the world. Legacy, you know, that's right. With, with my Legacy. skills and talent, so yeah. And you know what came to my mind, my brother? Um, there's a scripture in the Bible. I'm not, you know, I'm not a religious man, but I remember, you know, coming from Caribbean 
background, you ain't got no choice. But you know, can't read the Bible verse say this and it said that. I always remember the verse of the Bible. It says, what does it profit a man to benefit the whole world and lose his soul? Yeah. And even though Kelly's got a song called Trading My Life With You, Trading. So, because, you know, he's speaking in terms of God, giving his life to God. And I feel people never know the truth through the eyes of the media, brother. But it's so important, as you said, it's not about... The, you 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 got to want more than just want to be famous. And I feel a lot of these reality TV shows, it's just like, oh, I'm famous. But for what? What is the substance? What are you leaving? Because... You can, I want people to mention to me any of the people from any of these reality TV shows. I don't have to mention them. Where are they today? Absolutely. I mean, uh, absolutely. Where are they absolutely. today? You know? Absolutely. Um, I have so much. Listen, man, they contact me every single year, and I'm like, no, it's fine. Thank you. I'm good. And then, and then every year they have new staff. So the new staff contact me, and I'm like, no, thank you. Um, yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, you know, there, there's another thing that I will say, because um, somebody asks about, you know, producers, what you can do. I think um, try and upload as much great content as you can, because the phone becomes the new media. Come on. And so, um, you know, this right now is BBC. Like, us talking is BBC. That's right. It's, it's, this is it's the with Zalon, you know, uh, by Courtney, you know. Um, and 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 this is this is the new this is the new way to build value. I yes. feel that if there's anything that you want to do, creating content around that thing is one of the best ways to bring and attract the universe and opportunities to you. And Talk having that consistency, it. as much content as you can. Yes, sir, brother. Thank you, thank you, brother. I'm not going to hold you. There's so much we could go into, brother. But I'm not going to hold you. I'm gonna... Okay, there's one more last question. What would ain't okay? No, that that question was already answered. That's great, brother. I'm looking at the screen now, and this song that you done official Amy Winehouse tribute. You let me breathe, brother. No cap. I'm feeling, brother. I would love, and I feel we would love to hear at least a verse and a chorus from yourself, if you'd like to, brother. I was gonna play it as an outro, but I feel. It should come straight from the king's mouth, my brother. You know? Shit. It, All right. I, I tell you what. Do me a favor. I'll sing a little bit. Yes, I'll sing. Play, play, play the original out, right? To let it go, right? So good. I'll sing a little bit. Uh -huh. <clears throat> my God. I have not warmed up. Okay, let's try this. You're good. Right. Here we go. <clears throat> You're killing me. All right. No, no, no. No, no. I'm oh. I'll sing. I'm going to put it. I'll, I'll sing. Right. Like a virtual chorus. And then I'll say goodbye, and then the last thing you can play that, and then they right. can hear it properly. Gotcha. Is that okay? All right, people. I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the sound man. I've messed up on my first day on the job with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here we go. Right, let's go. Go ahead, my brother. <laughs> Tears will bring you back to me. But they fall the same. We started out on this journey, but it wasn't in vain. No, oh, please don't go. Oh, can't let go. Cause you let me breathe Can't let go Cause you're within me You're the one who believed With honesty I'll achieve Can't let go Cause you let me breathe So, listen man <laughs> Hey, sorry, hey, I'm sorry, hey. 18 months because of the lockdown, man. But yeah, that's it. Listen, I cannot wait. Can I just can I just say something before I go? Um, firstly, I want to say to you, thank you so much for this interview. Um, I, I I wanted to do something like this 
somebody that could ask me questions to remind me of certain things, to pull out information. And I want to thank you, brother. Like, I bow to uh, you, brother. I really, I, I, bow I, to I, you. I really, I really appreciate you so much. And ever since I've met you, bro, you've been consistent. The love has been consistent. And the same way how you felt my energy, I felt yours, bro. You've been really consistent. You know, um, yeah, absolutely, man. You've been a stand-up guy. Um, and uh, I, I just want to say, I cannot wait. Once this lockdown is done, I cannot wait to really bring that energy and perform for you guys live. Yes. I'm working on stuff behind the scenes. Follow me. Stay close to the channel. Um, follow my YouTube because I'm going to be answering some of these questions around Amy. I'm going to release some music soon. Come on. All of them. Uh, so thank you guys for tuning in. Courtney, you're the best. Love you guys. I've seen all your messages and your comments. Uh, send me inboxes. I do respond. Uh, and peace and love.